Hello everyone, my name is Heather Moorfield Lang and I'm an assistant professor with the University of South Carolina with the School of Library and Information Science and today I'm going to be sharing with you a professional development online webinar that focuses on digital accessibility tools and software. Now my earlier sessions that I've done for the School of Library and Information Science pretty much everything that I've been sharing has been free. Many of the tools that I'm going to be sharing today are free but some of the tools I'm going to be sharing do come with a cost. But I wanted to share a selection of digital resources and online tools as well as software that would be of use to make your websites, digital chats, online teaching and education, as well as accessibility for your students more available for those students who might be labeled as differently abled or making sure that we deliver our education to all of our students meeting them at every level so let's go ahead and get started one of the very first tools that I wanted to show you was Google Docs Google Docs is what you're looking at right now and Google Docs I'm actually going to show you Google accessibility and all of the tools that they offer in just a few moments but Google Docs if you haven't seen yet actually has an excellent voice to typing tool that's not only exceptionally useful just for voice to typing opportunities but incredibly handy to be able to use whether you need it for being differently abled or just because it's really nice to be able to type and talk so you simply go to Google Docs this is a Chrome add-in so you go right here to the blank or the plus to create a new document and then you go right up here to tools and you click on voice typing you will want to click on the microphone to speak using your microphone and then once you start talking the microphone type out whatever it is that you are saying you can also tell it to put in punctuation such as period and or question mark sometimes it gets things incorrect sometimes it will correct things as you go period all in all it has been an incredibly useful tool I've been very impressed with its success on typing as I've been speaking but of course you do have to go back in and do a little bit of editing as you are speaking and when you're done you hit the microphone and you're finished I'm not going to be saving this one I'm going to delete that document and move back to the home screen a very useful tool one that I've used myself excellent for when you're trying to give your arms and hands a break from all the typing that you might be doing I have a student who has some accessibility issues with his left hand being able to type this has been an excellent resource for him and just an exceptionally useful tool freely available easy to use quick and easy to get to completely there ready for our use the next item I'm going to be showing you is YouTube now of course we all know YouTube YouTube is now in connection with Google if you have a Google account you have a YouTube account now I have my own channel with YouTube and the really nice thing about having a YouTube channel is that your YouTube videos are automatically captioned when you go to my channel you have a video manager and the video manager is up top you click on video manager and this is going to list every video that you have created when you go to the edit button beside any video that you have created you have the option to click on your subtitles and closed captioning you can do subtitles in multiple languages you can caption in multiple languages when you go to info and settings you can tell it if you want it in a different language caption mine in English when I am creating my videos you automatically get English automatic which is going to immediately put all of your information in and it is going to caption your video for you and you get the option to edit now I'm going to exit and you'll notice that right here it says English this is my edited corrected version that I have already created for this particular video 
essentially I went in, I clicked edit, and then I went quickly through my video because at this point, this is actually a tool that gets smarter the more you use it. And I have over 60 videos in my YouTube channel and it has gotten better and better as I have been recording my videos. And at this point, it takes me very little time to edit my videos because it already captions my videos for me and I am able to go through, edit information out, and I'm able to create closed captioning for my videos in a very short amount of time. My videos can range anywhere from five minutes in length for my Tech 15 channel here for my short, easy to use videos where my viewers are figuring out how to integrate technology in their classrooms and libraries. And then I make videos similar to this one, which might be a little bit longer, 25, 30, sometimes 45 minutes in length. Doesn't matter. I can caption all of them. It does all of that work for me. So very easy to use. I've been very pleased. As I said, it gets smarter and smarter every time I use it. Has been incredibly useful and I've been very happy with it. So that's YouTube. Now, if you Google or simply go to Google accessibility, you're going to find out about all of the different accessibility tools that Google has. They have lots of different guides and resources all available for you. But if you click right here on products and features, it's going to list every product, feature, information, classrooms, Gmail for the calendar, Google Docs, Google Drawing, Google Guides, Google Forms for groups, Google Hangouts, everything that is available out there for you. They talk to about Walkie Talkie, which is a hands-free navigation, YouTube information that I've just given you. One of my favorite things that they offer at this time with Google Hangouts is the option to invite a sign language interpreter with Google Hangouts. So you actually have the option to go in and while you're doing a Google Hangout, you can do the Hangout Captions app where you type in your own captions. For a fee, you can actually have a sign language interpreter app and then you can also have, for a fee, Google Hangouts, they outsource, but you can actually have someone caption your Google Hangouts while you are having your Hangout live with other viewers. Google Forms, you can find out about screen reader and information, Google drawings, all different information about screen readers for those who might be differently abled in the area of visual impairment, all different types of information, much more than for me to go through right at this very moment. Not only do they have information available for your desktops and laptops, but they also have information for your Android devices, your Chrome browsers, your classroom information, Gmail, and so on. I highly recommend looking at Google, all of their accessibility features. They are continuously adding more. Since I last did a session like this for my students in my technology integration class here at the School of Library and Information Science, there are even more items added to this list than when I did this session last spring in 2016. So they have for Android OS, they have an eyes freed Android YouTube channel, an eyes freed Android developer for help, a talk back help, a braille back help. They are continuously looking for more and more opportunities. For example, just today I was searching for more accessibility tools and I've already found out that Facebook has options for you to enable all of your images to be able to be described for those who have visual impairments and they're looking for a user experiences researcher for those who are differently abled trying to enhance the experiences of those users who are labeled differently abled who are using Facebook, Yahoo is also working on those types of abilities to better enhance and increase what they are offering to their differently abled users out in the field. So many, many people are working towards their accessibility offerings. And you can see that they also have options for developers, enterprise, as well as initiatives and research. Lots of different options here.
One of my other tools that I'm very fond of is TechSmith. TechSmith offers lots of different options. This is where you can find Camtasia, which is what I'm using right now to record this video, where you can screen capture anything on your screen. You can record, you can edit, but they also offer a shorter version of that called Jing. And Jing, you can make short videos in order to quickly explain, demonstrate, and show how to pretty much do anything. So for instance, before I was at the University of South Carolina, I was a university librarian at Virginia Tech in the area of education. I would commonly get questions from my patrons, professors, faculty, as well as students about how to use certain databases, how to use certain online tools. And instead of doing a step-by-step -step list of how to log in and how to use a database or how to access something, I would make them a quick video. This way they would quickly have a link. They could see the video. They could step-by-step -step watch how to use something. And it was very easy to use, very quick and easy. It had an automatic URL link to be able to go to, and they could watch it. I could put in arrows, I could put in notations, and it was a much easier way to learn and instruct. Some of our learners are visual learners. Some folks like to have things written out, but if you can demonstrate how to do something, everyone will appreciate that option. And so you can capture what you see, you can record what you're doing, and you can send the video. TechSmith also has an excellent tool called Snagit. And Snagit is a way to capture your screen with an image. So if you just need to do a quick snapshot, you can snag it off of your screen. So that's another option also available through TechSmith. I'm a big fan. Um, Jing is free up to five minutes. Snag it, you can have a 15 day trial for free, but they do have an educator's discount of $25 a year. And then Camtasia, they have an educator's discount for a license of $150. And then you can do updates. So you have lots of different options through TechSmith, a very nice product that I've been very pleased with over the years. And as I was just saying, Camtasia, you can try it for free for 30 days. So you can completely use that, try that, see if you like it and try that out. I have been very pleased with Camtasia. You are looking at Camtasia right now. Camtasia will record absolutely anything on your screen for as long as you wish. Jing, the one I was just showing you is a five minute length video creation tool. Camtasia, on the other hand, you can do anything you wish. And then you can save them as MP3 audio files, MP4 or HTML video files. You have a host of options. You can actually do closed captioning. You can embed pop-up bubbles for text. You can do a host of things much longer than you want me to list here. I've been very pleased with Camtasia for screen capturing, screen recordings, all different types of things. Pretty much you're only limited to your imagination. You can add and import media. You can create interactive t content. You can make high quality HD videos. I've been using Camtasia in some way, shape or form since 2009. And I have always been very pleased with how easy it is to use. But when it comes to creating videos and content that's easy to use, for multiple learners of all different abilities, this is an excellent, easy, intuitive tool to use. It is not free, but of course you can try it out for free to see if it is something that you are interested in. But when it comes to recording and screen capturing tools, it is certainly not the most expensive. So at least I'm giving you one that is a little more middle of the road on price. When you're looking for an option past Google Documents that will type out what you are speaking. Drag and Speak is an oldie, but a goodie. It has been around for years. I actually used Drag and Speak back in 2004 and 2005 when I was working on my doctorate to work to help me with some of my assignments to save myself some of the typing. This was a program that has gotten better with age 
Now you have options such as drag in anywhere for your phone. You have options to drop in MP3 audio files and it will transcribe your audio files for you. You can talk to type. It is also a tool that will get smarter as you use it. It will learn your voice the more you use it. This is an excellent tool for those who have movement abilities, who are differently abled in the area of movement. This is also an excellent tool. For instance, I have issues with my back and spine, and so it's really helpful for the amount of time for me typing. But now with Google Docs and being able to type to speak with Google Documents, that's actually a very competitive tool that is absolutely free. But Google Docs doesn't offer all of the other things that are out there, such as the MP3s, the transcribing, the applications. But Dragon Speak is one that's been around for a good long while, not incredibly expensive, and quite resourceful on how much they continue to grow and change over time to provide services to the public. For our clients and patrons in libraries as well as in our departments who have visual impairments, I've spoken to multiple people. JAWS is the leading provider when it comes to screen readers. This is a install software tool that can be downloaded and it does have a trial. So if you'd like to try it to see how it works. Most of your students who have visual impairments will already know about JAWS because this is such a leader in the field. Making sure that if you are teaching online or even providing face-to-face -face instruction, making sure that the materials that we provide online for our students and patrons are available in Word, PDF, so that they can be read through JAWS, which stands for Job Access with Speech. But this particular tool reads everything on a screen. It will also read PowerPoints. It will read Internet, Firefox. It's going to go through and look up all different types of information. It has convenient features to go through PDF documents. Um, it saves time with skim reading. And this is an incredibly useful tool for our differently abled clients patrons, students, even faculty. I myself have not used this tool a great deal, but I know that it is very important for me as a professor who teaches online to make sure that what I am providing to my students is available to be loaded into a JAWS program. It is out there. It is available. It also includes voices for over 30 different languages. So it's an incredibly useful tool to know about and to be familiar with. And then the last tool that I wanted to share with you today, I know that I have folks outside of South Carolina who are viewing this and are aware of this particular professional development resource video. Pretty much every state has some version of Libraries for the Blind, Talking Books, Services for the Visually Impaired and Physically Handicapped. But here in South Carolina, we have the South Carolina Talking Books Services. I'm from North Carolina originally, and we had a very strong selection for our students, patrons, and clients, Services for the Blind and Visually Impaired. An excellent selection of books, and that's grown immensely over the years because now not only do we provide books in braille but then we also have playaways takeaways materials that can be played through computers as well as our carryable devices and south carolina talking book services not only provides books that are available but are continuously recording new material all the time in fact if you're in or near the state capital of columbia and would like to record a book or help the talking book services out, they are continuously looking for people to help record more material. An excellent service. If you'd like to find out more, please check out SouthCarolinaTalkingBook.org. If you are with a state library and you don't have these services and you'd like to find out more information, please let them know. 
you can certainly get in touch with them and you can find out how they have their talking book services set up. And if you're here in the area and would like to get involved, look over in the right hand corner and you can find out about getting involved. Up here we also have information about their collection applications as well as as I said getting involved all different types of information available to you so these are just a few of the resources available for our patrons our clients our students our faculty everyone out there who might be considered differently abled or as I'm always telling my students in my classes Sometimes you might want to have a closed caption video because you've put the kids to bed and you want to be able to watch a video on a lower volume level. Or sometimes it's just really nice to have the transcription to this week's class talk because it helps you to have both the transcription and the video. It's learning for all. It's accessibility for all. And that's what's incredibly important. So I'm hoping that some of these resources and tools maybe help you think about what's out there and also help you to see that we're not the only ones who are thinking about it. Google, Yahoo, Facebook, they are hiring people of all different ability levels to help them better meet the needs of all of their clients, which is exactly what we should be doing as well. So I hope this has been a useful video for you. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. Thank you so much and have a great day.